amenorrhea is the topic for uh, this video. And amenorrhea, by definition, is uh, absence uh, of menses or failure of menses. And there's two types. There's primary and there's secondary. Uh, primary is basically when uh, a uh, teenage girl basically has never had a, a menstrual flow. Uh, she's reached perhaps age 16, 17, and she still has not had menstrual flow. Secondary is uh, a situation in which uh, a woman has had uh, regular periods and then all of a sudden for some reason for greater than three cycles or greater than three months uh, has stopped uh, having periods. So that's the difference between primary and secondary. Um, amenorrhea is a, is a big uh, topic but we will try our best, uh, I will try my best uh, to break it down uh, into something that is a little more um, easier to understand. And the first thing I'd like to talk about before I get into everything is the HPO axis. And what is HPO? H stands for hypothalamus, P is the pituitary, and O is ovary. Now these uh, three uh, all secrete hormones and um, this is in the brain, uh, the skull, this is in the skull and the brain area and this is in the female um, uh, uh, pelvic uh, location. And now each of these secrete hormones that are involved in menses and if anything disrupts this axis it can cause amenorrhea. So what are the hormones? Well from the hypothalamus you have GnRH which is gonadotropin releasing hormone from the pituitary you have FSH which is follicle stimulating hormone and then from the ovary you have estrogen and these are the hormones that are involved um, in the menstrual cycle now if any of these hormones are disrupted uh, or um, uh, um, either too high or too low, it can disrupt this axis. Now there's other hormones that can uh, disrupt this axis as well and they're prolactin, TSH, and the androgens which are DHEAS and testosterone. So these are some of the key players and I want you to remember those. Now we talk a little bit about hormones, right? Hormones definitely are part of amenorrhea, but there's a second big part of it, and that is something called uterine structural abnormalities. Remember, the uterus is where menses occurs. So if there's some sort of abnormality, like if the uterus is absent, or if the uterus has an obstruction, obstruction to flow, that can also cause amenorrhea. So I want you to remember that and what I'm going to do now is list some of the causes of amenorrhea. Now I'm going to list nine causes and that may seem a bit daunting at first but you'll see that it's actually not too bad because you can kind of break it up into some basic categories and it makes it much easier to remember. So the first big cause is by far the most common one, pregnancy. That's why the person has amenorrhea. She's pregnant. So that's easy to remember. The second one is constitutional delay of puberty. That basically means that the teenage girl is late in, in, in puberty. Uh, all the hormone levels are normal. Now the next one is medications. Now medications, we'll talk a little bit more about this, um, what they can do is they can disrupt the hormone levels and a, a very common one is antipsychotics, antipsychotics, and it's easy to explain because antipsychotics decrease the level of dopamine. Dopamine normally inhibits prolactin, so if dopamine is low, prolactin inhibition isn't there, so prolactin's level, prolactin levels rise, and when prolactin levels rise, you get a disruption of that uh, axis that I had uh, talked about. That hypothalamus, uh, pituitary, ovarian axis. We'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. I might need a little bit more space here, so uh, I, I think I can fit it all in. All right, let's keep going here. Next, we have something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. 
Now, remember I told you you can characterize these, and PCOS actually is an abnormal uh, abnormality in hormones. That's um, and in particular, what we're talking about is the hormones FSH and LH. So even though it is its own unique uh, entity, it really can be grouped in uh, a hormonal disorder. All right, what's after PCOS? Pituitary dysfunction. Pituitary dysfunction. Now, the pituitary gland secretes a lot of hormones. So those hormones can disrupt this axis. Now, the hormones that we're really talking about most of the time are prolactin and uh, the pituitary gland what can happen sometimes you can get these microadenomas little tumors adenomas and these tumors can cause an excess in prolactin and that can disrupt that HPO axis and cause amenorrhea next one is ovarian failure if you don't have a properly functioning ovary you can uh, have a uh, much uh, decreased level of estrogen and that can also disrupt that axis and cause amenorrhea. The next one, and we touched a little bit about this earlier, are uh, abnormalities in structure of the uterus. The uterus is absent or there might even be an obstruction. And the last two are increased level of androgens remember DHEA and testosterone and the very last one I want to talk about is thyroid disorders so at first it may seem like a very long list but think about it well pregnancy is a very easy one to remember constitutional delay of puberty is easy medications may seem like a different category but really it's causing amenorrhea because of disrupting hormone levels so that's hormone H for hormones PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome is a hormone related issue pituitary dysfunction also hormones ovarian uh, failure also hormones because of the estrogen uh, androgen and thyroid disorders also hormones and then this is the one uh, cause of amenorrhea that is related to structural abnormalities either the uterus is absent or the uterus is abnormal or there's some sort of blockage or obstruction in the uterus so it may seem like a very daunting list to remember but it's actually not so bad all right now unlike most other disorders um, you know most other disorders we start off by symptoms but the symptoms for amenorrhea well is amenorrhea the woman or teenage girl doesn't have any periods um, either has never had them or has had them but all of a sudden has stopped but to narrow this down you know you want to get to a final answer you look at other symptoms this is the main symptom but what are some of the other symptoms and I don't want to go into too exhaustive detail but I want to give you a little bit of a sort of a introduction as to how to approach this so for example for example, if a person comes in and in addition to amenorrhea, she has galactorrhea, she has um, headaches, and she has visual field defects, you probably will most likely think of prolactin. And you also will most likely think that this is a pituitary disorder. So that will lead you, these symptoms will lead you to uh, figuring out what might be the cause. Now let's say the person comes in and her, in addition to amenorrhea, her symptoms are fatigue and she feels cold and she's gained weight. Well this might lead you to think of a thyroid disorder. So the TSH is might, might be something you want to check. Now I'll give you one more. Let's say she comes in and in addition to amenorrhea, she has acne, she has a deep voice. Uh, she's got facial hair. Well, this might lead you to think of androgens. She might have an excess in androgens, and that's causing the amenorrhea. So that's what I wanted to touch on in the symptoms. Is I, I'm not listing every single symptom that you know could possibly happen uh, because that would take too long. But what I want you to kind of understand is how to start thinking about these things. 
Well, for the diagnosis, what I really wanted to do is draw uh, two uh, uh, flow charts. And the flow charts really, I'll try my best to illustrate how to approach this. And the first flow chart I'd really like to draw is primary, about primary amenorrhea. So primary amenorrhea, right there. So primary amenorrhea, how do you approach it? Well, the very first thing you look at and remember, what is primary amenorrhea? It's a, a situation in which a girl has never had a period, but she's past puberty, you know, maybe 16, 17. The very first thing you look at is secondary sexual characteristics. Are they present, yes or no? And what do I mean by this? Well, you're looking at things like breast development, pubic hair, the type of things that would um, be present in a girl that's past puberty. If the answer is yes, then you do a pregnancy test and the pregnancy test is the beta HCG if I can spell it beta HCG and if that beta HCG is positive well there you have your answer she's pregnant if the beta HCG is negative then what you do is a pelvic ultrasound and the pelvic ultrasound is what shows you the uterine abnormalities the uterus could be absent or the uterus could be abnormal or there could be a blockage of some kind in the uterus that's preventing menstruation so that's how you approach this part of the flow chart now if the sexual secondary sexual characteristics are not there then what do you do well then you check a hormone called FSH follicle stimulating hormone and if the FSH is high meaning it's greater than 20, then that will lead you to believe that there's some sort of ovarian failure. Why? Well, remember call the ovaries secrete estrogen. And the estrogen in a system of negative feedback will cause FSH, actually the arrow probably should go to FSH, will cause FSH levels to, to go down through a, a system of negative feedback. If the ovarian failure is the is present, estrogen levels are low, and therefore there's no negative feedback on the FSH, therefore the FSH levels are high. If the FSH level is normal, well then what do you do? Well then you check for other hormones, and those three hormones are TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, prolactin, and the androgens, which are DHEA and testosterone. So that's a way of approaching primary amenorrhea. Now let's draw, the, let's draw the diagram for secondary amenorrhea. Now remember secondary amenorrhea is a situation in which a woman has had regular uh, menses and then all of a sudden she stopped for three months or three cycles. So what do you do? The very first thing in this one is the pregnancy test very first thing in the in the flow chart if it's positive you have your answer she's pregnant if it's negative then you can move forward it's if it's negative the very first thing you want to check is two hormones the first one is prolactin and the second one is TSH and these are the hormones you want to check first prolactin most commonly is due to a, a adenoma in the pituitary so you want to check some sort of imaging like an MRI of the head and you also want to check the meds because remember we talked about how antipsychotics can cause um, uh, elevated prolactin levels because of the decrease in dopamine TSH is a simple blood test that checks uh, the thyroid now if these don't give you an answer if they're both normal then what do you do well then you move on to FSH and the androgens which are DHEA and uh, testosterone. Alright, let's talk about FSH. Well, we talked about FSH a little bit in the primary one. It's kind of the same. If the FSH is high, then you think of a system of ovarian failure. So there's something wrong with the ovaries. If the FSH is normal or low, then what do you do? Well, if it's low, since FSH comes from the pituitary, you want to check uh, if there's anything wrong with the pituitary. 
So do an MRI of the head. If FSH levels are normal, then you want to start thinking about uterine abnormalities. And that's where you investigate the uterus. So you can do a pelvic ultrasound. And there's also another test that can check for uh, uh, obstruction or blockage. It's called a hysteroscopy. And then finally, the androgens. If the androgen levels uh, are uh, high, um, there might be a uh, tumor in the adrenal gland. Because remember, androgens come from the adrenal gland. So you want to investigate the adrenal gland with some imaging. And uh, yeah, that's the way to approach it. That's the diagnostic approach. And finally, the treatment. Well, the treatment, as you can imagine, it depends completely on the etiology. So you, you treat, uh, the treatment of this really involves the treatment of the cause. So, I mean, there's no magic treatment. You have to first investigate the cause, and then you treat the cause. So I'd like to finish off with a couple of vignettes. So here we go. 33-year-old woman comes to the physician because of amenorrhea. She had menarche at age 13 and had normal, normal periods since then. However, her last menstrual period was eight months ago. She complains of occasional milky nipple discharge. She had no medical problems, takes no medications. She is particularly concerned because she would like to become pregnant as soon as possible. Examination shows a white nipple discharge bilaterally, but the rest of the exam is unremarkable. Urine HCG is negative. TSH is normal. Prolactin is elevated. Head MRI scan is unremarkable. Which of the following is the most appropriate pharmacotherapy? Well, this is a very interesting question. A prolactin is elevated, so you immediately start thinking of the pituitary. But they're saying that they did the MRI and it's unremarkable. Well, that's because, and this is common, this is a microadenoma. And microadenomas oftentimes are so small that they don't show up. But you still need to treat it. So how do you treat? How do you decrease prolactin levels? Well, do you remember dopamine is what inhibits prolactin levels? And a dopamine agonist is bromocryptine. So that's that. And finally, 32-year-old woman comes to the physician because she has not had a menstrual period for seven months. She previously had normal cycles. She also states that over the past year she has felt increasingly weak and tired. She notes that she always feels cold and that her hair has become has been thinning over the past year. She also complains of constipation, weight gain, and depression. Temperature is 98, blood pressure is 100 over 60, pulse 56, respiration is 10. Examination is significant for brittle hair and deep delayed deep tendon reflexes. Urine HCG is negative. TSH is 20, which is high. Prolactin is normal. Which of the following is the most likely cause? Well, this one is a pretty key uh, diagnostic uh, test, but then also the uh, uh, the symptoms that she's feeling cold and has been gaining weight, and uh, that is very consistent with hypothyroidism.